it should be detectable by a photosensitive gamma count synthesizer. <laughs> what the hell is that? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 so bad they're good movies you've never heard of. Golden Nugget, forget the world, man. Have a groovy time, spend some moolah. You wanna go? For this list, we'll be ranking movies that have enjoyed cult followings, despite their occasionally dubious level of quality. Which of these do you want to watch? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Invasion of the Bee girls The drive-in movie is a quintessential piece of Americana that has gained something of a new lease on life in recent years. Now, if we have to listen to some more crazy ideas, I'm leaving. Invasion of the Bee girls is one of the well, B-movies that frequented the drive-in circuit back in its golden years, and it's easy to see why. The story is pure exploitation, as mutated women with the sexual proclivities of bees begin exhausting men to the point of death. Keep me company in my time of need. It's trashy cheese at its meltiest, yet Invasion of the Bee Girls plays it straight enough that it never becomes truly parodic or boring. There's some sort of social pattern here, but I just can't figure out what it is. Instead, the film, starring former The Price is Right model Anitra Ford, serves up some 70s nostalgia for the secret sleazebag in us all. Number 9. Titanic. The legend goes on. No, you're not imagining things. This really is a Titan exploitation movie. Producer and occasional director Camilo Teddy helmed this animated fever dream back in 2000. An assault on good taste and proof that the infamous Italian exploitation film industry of the 70s and 80s never truly went away. You know, there's something you should know, so I'm gonna tell you so. Don't sweat it. Forget it. Enjoy the show. Titanic The Legend Goes On even received varying dubs and edits, meaning that the plot changes drastically depending on whether you're watching the uncut Italian version or the edited American one. Now I know who stole my locket. It was that girl. No, no, I don't think it was her. Il est possible que... This latter version barely runs an hour long, but you'll still be confused and perplexed at the glaring lapses in logic, clunky animation, and cringeworthy jokes. Honestly, it's impressively bad stuff that you may just want to see for yourself. Why do you put up with the cake? Why do you do? Don't know. We, we don't, don't know. know. Number 8. Your The Hunter from the Future Antonio Margariti's Your Hunter from the Future makes its presence known almost immediately with one banging earworm of a theme song. Musical awesomeness aside, the film was a huge rental hit back in the 1980s despite Your's negative critical reputation. Then again, film critics never did tend to warm to the quirky sword and sorcery that Yor offers from the jump. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> now we fight. Bloody prehistoric battles, awkward performances, and one hard story swerve near the back end made Yor stand out from many of Conan worshipping brethren. By feeding your ambition to create a master race. You have kept the world in darkness and hindered progress. Reb Brown cuts a fine B-movie hero as well, although we're pretty sure Schwarzenegger wasn't exactly worried about any competition. Number 7. Best Friends Fans of The Room who need just a little more masochistic fun in their lives might want to check out Best Friends, a film written by the co-star of that film, Greg Sustero. Sorry, can, I, what can, I help? Can, you, can you help me? Can I work for you? What kind of qualification skill do you have? Well, I do... Uh, Communication, I'm in. I, I work as a janitor. I'm a, I'm, I, can, I can clean, you know? I the flick reunites Sustero and his room co-star Tommy Wiseau and allows the latter to try and prove that his legacy could be something a bit more than creating So Bad It's Good cinema. You know, we should celebrate, like, eat uh, cake, like uh, sorbet or... Does Best Friends achieve this aim? No. No, it doesn't. Kudos to Sustero for trying, however, and it's honestly nice to see Wiseau in a better constructed film with a larger budget. 
You can't help but root for the guy, and Best Friends is a great way of Wazo getting one more shot at the spotlight. Who are you? Are you John? No, I'm not John. Number 6. Pinocchio's Revenge Old school horror fans know that the direct-to-video market can be a treasure trove of forgotten goodness, just waiting to be rediscovered. Evil comes in all shapes and sizes. Maybe he did kill all the others. Pinocchio's Revenge just might be one of those movies. A strange slasher film directed by Kevin S. Tenney, who helmed the original Night of the Demons. Run, Judy, run. See, Judy, run. <laughs> Sure, Pinocchio's Revenge leans hard on the killer doll archetype originated by the Twilight Zone's talking Tina and Chucky from the Child's Play franchise, but it does so with a twist that casual viewers might not see coming. We're not going to spoil it here, but Pinocchio's Revenge manages to strike a nice balance between the expected and the unexpected. Sounds like a great party. Yeah. Number 5. Miami Connection the profile of 1987's Miami Connection has admittedly been raised a bit in recent years, thanks to a home video release and a repertory run that reintroduced the film to a modern audience. Just remember what I said if you don't want to get hurt. You don't scare me at all. Jane, I want to talk at to you all. later. Goodbye. Let's go. You'd be hard pressed to find many who saw Miami Connection during its original run, however, thanks to poor sales and even worse reviews. And although we can certainly see why this was initially the case, watching Miami Connection with a group of friends and perhaps through the lens of postmodern irony, things can change very quickly. Salami. Bye bye. Yeah. The awkward dialogue becomes charming, the plot holes hilarious, and the fight choreography, well, surprisingly solid. Oh, and we can't forget the fictional band Dragon Sound. Taekwondo! Number 4. The Devil's Reign Hey, do you know how the Michael Myers mask from Halloween was an altered Captain Kirk replica from Star Trek? Did you ever wonder what that face might look like in the flesh? They won't give the Devil's Man what he wants. Your father My father! Would agree with me. Well, look no further than 1975's The Devil's Reign, where William Shatner himself boasts a pair of black eyes, the devil's eyes. Praise be the Lord of light and darkness. The film itself is indicative of a post-exorcist world where satanic and occult themes were all the rage, and there's some truly awesome devil makeup on Ernest Borgnine. Church of Satan founder Antoine LaVey was even an advisor on the film, but don't expect the devil's reign to explain much about what's going on. Free the souls and free yourself! To destroy the devil's reign, you will wander through eternity, a creature of nothing, neither of heaven nor of hell. Instead, just turn your brain off and enjoy all the goopy, melty fun. Number 3. The Apple the 1970s and 80s were full of rock operas that were born out of the sort of impossibly bad ideas one can only gestate while under the influence. There ain't no good, there ain't no bad, there ain't no happiness, there ain't no tears. The Sgt. Pepper's movie was one, while 1980s The Apple is another. Born from the team of Menahem Golan and Yoram Globus from the infamous production company Canon Films, Attention! Attention, please, good citizens. It is now one minute to four o'clock. Time to stop ordinary activities and prepare for the National BIM Hour. Golan directed the film, which used the futuristic setting of <clears throat> 1994 to stage a flashy, glittery ode to biblical allegory, artistic freedom, and sequence. A lot of sequence. The Apple is honestly a blast, albeit perhaps not the way Golan initially intended. A disco and funk fused trip that's best enjoyed with good friends and a pinch of salt. Darling, how nice of you to come. Maybe I'll leave it some other time. I'll see you busy. Number two, Never Too Young to Die. The cast of Never Too Young to Die basically sells itself. 
a prime example of 80s cheese begging for you to sit down and watch. Poison the water supply. I'm going to poison the water supply for gold, for ransom, for jewels, for money. <laughs> poison, poison, poison. A young John Stamos, vanity at the peak of her popularity, Gene Simmons as an unforgettable villain, heck, even Freddy Krueger himself, Robert England, shows up for the fun. Never too young to die varies wildly in tone, but never forgets to be fun. Stamos and Vanity look great on screen, while Simmons shamelessly chews the scenery. I'm gold. Gold! Oh, the gut joy. <laughs> Although the latter's hermaphroditic character could be considered today by some to be offensive, Simmons puts in a performance with gleeful wits and charisma, unafraid to push boundaries. Heck, Stamos himself called it the best worst thing you'll ever see. I can't stop it! What do I do? Before we name our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Deathbed, the bed that eats. Indescribable art house schlock. Oh, Mutama, oh, I'm being eaten alive. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. If that title doesn't hook you, we don't know what will. Why? Why did you have to do that to my helper? It's harmless. It'll wear off in a short while. Laser Blast, a mystery science theater favorite. <laughs> Rad, BMX and a bitchin' pop soundtrack. It all comes back to you. Open fire. Eight-Legged Freaks, a fun homage to creature features. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Planet of Dinosaurs The poster for Planet of Dinosaurs is undeniably awesome. The stop-motion creature effects are also pretty damn good for such a low-budget film. This doesn't necessarily mean that Planet of Dinosaurs was destined for classic status, of course, as many bad movie fans today revel in the pedestrian acting, stilted pacing, and overall weirdness that defines this late 70s curiosity. Well, doesn't being a vice president pull any weight around here? Of course, Mr. Baylor. I mean, you get to walk on the shady side. Planet of Dinosaurs is the sort of film where watching YouTube reviews or riff commentaries are sometimes better than watching the real thing, as there's plenty of dull spots. That said, the film has earned its so bad it's good reputation perhaps because of this reappraisal by modern day film fans. And isn't that the point? Giving these old flicks a new lease on life? Go ahead and run, Lee. You've got a whole damn world to run in, but you're gonna have to run alone. We're not going with you. I'm in charge here. You'll do as I say. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.